Yeah. So we have started with this proof. Deep, you joined a little late today. So prove that root three is irrational. This is what we are doing. So we started by assuming that root three is rational. So if it is rational, we should be able to write it in the form of A by B, where A and B are co primes. And then what did we do? We squared both the sides over here. So I wrote three is equal to A square by B square. And then I rearranged it three into B square. I wrote it here and this became A square. So A square is equal to three B square. Now you can very easily see that A square can be written as three times of something B square, some number B square. So three is at least a factor of A square. And yesterday or in the previous class, we had learned if a square has some factor as if p is some if p is a factor of a square that means p is a factor of a also if p is a prime number correct you remember that so we can say that 3 is a factor of a also So up to here, everyone is okay? Quick confirmation, all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So, see, in the previous case, when we were trying to prove that root 2 is uh, irrational, what did we do? We showed that a was, a, a was divisible by 2, right? That means 2 was a factor of a squared and a also. Let me show you that PDF from yesterday's class. Yeah. So here, what did we show? We showed that 2 was a factor of A. But if we are proving the same thing for root 3, what are we getting? We are showing that root uh, 3 is a factor of A. So if we had to do this for root five, what will happen? Five will become a factor of it. Same thing, only small changes happening, but the overall process is exactly same. Now, who has understood after this? What should I do after this? We have to substitute the value of A. Yes, if I'm saying that a is a factor of uh, three is a factor of a, that means a should be able, we should be able to write a in terms of three into something, right? So, we can write a three, is equal a. To three times of c, where c is some integer. We don't care about that, what it is. I'm just saying that a is divisible by three, like suppose, uh, 21. If I'm saying 21 is divisible by 3, then of course you know that 21 we can write it as 3 times of some number, right? Yes, sir. So that is what we are writing, that some number as C. We don't care about what number that is. So A can be written as 3C. And uh, where do we put it? We put it in this place over here, correct? So let's call this as a first equation. Substitute a is equal to 3c. When you substitute this in the first equation, what will happen to the first equation? Tell me, guys. 9c squared is equal to 3b squared. Yes. So 3c whole square is equal to 3b squared. Now, this will become 9c squared, like you said, and then 3b squared. Everyone is following? If you want me to write up more steps, you have to let me know. Tell me, guys, is it clear? What's happening? Yes, sir. I have just, yes. in place of uh, A, I have put 3C over here. You see, A square is there, I have put 3C whole square. And this 3B, I have written as it is, 3B square. Okay, 
So what should I write now? I should, I have already written A square in terms of 3B square. Now I, have, I should write B square in terms of something. So write B square is equal to what? B square is equal to 9C square by 3. So this 3 and 9 will get cancelled. It will become 3C square. B square can be written as 3C square. So just like what happened in the earlier case, you're seeing that B square has three as a factor. That means B square is also divisible by three. So three is a factor of B square implies that three is a factor of B also. But what we had assumed, we had assumed that A and B don't have any common factor. But I'm saying that 3 is a factor of B also, and 3 is a factor of A also. This is a contradiction. 3 is a factor of A and B both. So I'm just writing the wordings around it. You have you have seen this in the previous class also. Uh, so three is a factor of A and B both. What does it mean? It is contradicting the fact that A and B are co-primes. And why did this contradiction arise? This? Because our assumption is wrong. Yes. This contradiction arises due to incorrect assumption that root 3 is rational. So we can conclude that hence root 3 is rational. So are you people getting a hang of this? How to prove root 2, root 3 as irrational? Anybody wants me to explain anything? No? Excellent. I mean, people don't hesitate. If you have not understood, don't worry about other people. Other people have understood, they are, they are not going to write word exam for you. Don't feel that your doubt may be silly or small. I have said this enough number of times. Whatever doubt it is, however silly it is, don't bother about all that. Get it clarified. Don't go to the exam with that silly doubt. Sir? Yes, tell me. Sir, if we, have, if we are given a rational number, and they are asking to prove that it is not irrational. So we will assume it as irrational and then do that, or we will just use like okay. it is rational only and that. Okay, hold on. Let's let me try to understand your question. What are we given? We are giving a given a rational number or irrational number? Rational number, sir. And they are asking you to prove that it is irrational. It is not irrational. Won't get that kind of question. You don't get to prove that something is rational because if if they give you a rational number, like suppose if they give you five, there is no big proof to do anything. Five can be very easy, easily written as five by one, where where five is you can say that p is equal to five and q is equal to one. So this can be represented in the form of p by q. That's why it is rational. So there is no big proof for this one, okay, for a rational number. 
only when it is irrational, then how can you prove that it cannot be written in the form of P by Q? That becomes a little complicated, no? How can you say that it cannot be written in the form of P by Q? So that complication, we can uh, solve by doing this kind of uh, strategy like we did. We assume that it is rational. And if it is rational, we'll do some calculation on it. And because of that calculation, some problem will happen. Like we said that A and B are co-primes, but then they, they are, we are showing that they have a common factor three. So that is a problem, right? If something is co-prime, they should not have any common factors. So this contradiction happens. Why did it happen? Because we made the incorrect assumption that root three was irrational. Okay, so that, that's the reason we are using this kind of strategy for it. We don't need that for rational numbers. Okay, is that clear? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Anyone, any other questions? Any step you did not understand something, why it happened or anything? All right, then. I'm giving you so much time and I'm asking again and again, because again, I'm saying this is a very important question. This comes in board exams so many times. Instead of two, sometimes they'll give you root three, sometimes root five, root seven, anything, any number they can give, but this question comes in board exam many times. In, even in your school exams, you can expect that uh, whenever your syllabus is for uh, is having this chapter, you can expect a question from this topic for sure, proving that something is irrational. It is that important, okay? Sir? Yes, tell me. Sir, what is the meaning of contradiction? Contradiction, okay. See, uh, contradiction is an English word. When you say that something is there and then you come across a result which, which opposes your idea, whatever you had. For example, you say that uh, in a very simple way, you can think of it like this. Somebody is saying that he's very rich, okay? And then he is wearing some torn out shoes and we're going in a very bad dress. So that would be a contradiction, no? Okay. Sir, is contradiction an opposite as he? Contradiction means, I'll say that again, Nitya. Sir, is contradiction and opposite are same? Contradiction and opposite. No, we shouldn't think they are opposite. There is some similarity between them, but they are not similar meaning. They are different. Opposite means just the exact opposite of something. Opposite is simple to understand. Contradiction, that's what? When you are saying something, but you are doing opposite of that. Uh, but it's not about saying and doing. It's about... Uh, when our assumption is wrong. Yeah. When we In terms of math, yeah, that's true. But whatever we assume that... We assume that something is true. But we get a result which, which says that we, we have, whatever we assumed as true is actually false. That is a contradiction. Yeah, try to think about the same analogy which I gave about, about the poor and uh, like some, some if somebody keeps saying, bragging that someone is very rich and then with all his actions or uh, whatever, you see that actually that person is not so rich. So that is a contradictory thing. Normally it is so, about speech, yes. Yeah, tell me. So here you have written uh, root three is rational. Uh, irrational, I mean, sorry. <laughs> see? Three is irrational, of course. So this contradicts the assumption that root three is rational. If it is contradiction, that means what? It will be irrational. Of course, that is what we are proving. So that was a, just a mistake in writing. Everyone understands that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So let's take up the next example, which is easier than whatever you have done so far. Okay. See, when you have a question like this, where there is some rational part and then irrational part, then it becomes very easy because in this kind of question, you can say that root three is irrational. You, you can assume, you know that root three is irrational. 
So let's take up this and then we'll see how it works. So what do we have to do? We have to show that five minus root three is irrational. Again, like always, if we have to show that this whole thing is irrational, what do we do? We consider that it is rational. And if this is rational, what should we be able to do? We should be able to write 5 minus root 3 as what? P by Q. Yes, P by Q or A by B, anything. So let's keep it as A by B, consistent with what we have been doing so far. Okay, and where A and B are co-primes and B not equal to 0, same thing. Okay. Then, then what you do is you separate your root, the irrational part of this number. This is negative minus three. So I'll send it to the right hand side and bring my a by b to the left hand side. Okay. Bring your a by b to the left, send minus three to the other side so that it becomes plus root three. So what's my LHS then? Tell me guys, if you're following, if you're not. Five, five minus, minus A by B. Five minus. Is equal to root three. Okay, very good. Five minus A by B is equal to root three. Then, what else? See, A, B are integers. I'm saying that A is an integer, B is an integer. So five minus a by b, can you see that this part is at least going to be a rational number? You understand the definition of rational, right? Rational means it should be able, we should be able to write it in the form of P by Q. So to show this to you, let's go to the rough thing. So if you have five minus A by B, can you not write this as five B minus A by B? Can you understand what is this? Hold on. This is a simple calculation, right? Fraction. If you have a fraction like this, it will become 5B minus A by B. Now, B is an integer, A is also an integer. So 5B minus A will also be an integer only, no? Numerator is going to be an integer. Denominator is also an integer. So this will be a, a rational number. Can you see that now, all of you? 5 minus A by B is actually a rational number because of this, because it can be written in the form of A by B or P by Q or anything like numerator is also integer and denominator is also integer. I times of integer will be some integer and that integer minus another integer will also be an integer. So you can see, right? Guys, if you're not understanding, let me know. Don't go silent on me. 
I know this, these things are a little complicated for you. You have not seen this kind of thing before. So tell me if you're able to understand that five minus A by B is rational or not. Yes, sir. Okay, okay Ritesh, I understood. Understand, sir. Deep? Yes, sir. You can explain again, sir. Okay, yes, I will do that. That's what I want. If you don't understand, you have to let me know right away. Okay. See, I'm saying that, okay, up to this step is clear, right? Five minus A by, up to this step, it is clear, all of you? Yes, sir. Okay, then I, what I'm saying is this whole thing is a rational number. Why am I saying that it is a rational? Because, see, A and B are some integers only, no? We said that they are co-primes, means what? They are integers, they are co-prime integers. Actually, we don't even need co-prime over here in this question. You can just actually write that they are A and B are integers and B not equal to zero. You can write like that also. So A is an integer and B is an integer. So let's take an example of A and B. Let's say something. So five minus in, in place of A, give me some example, some integer. Three. Three and give me some integer for B also. Okay, so you can see that three is, A is an integer, B is also an integer. Now, when you do this calculation, five minus three by two, what are you going to get? Will it suddenly become irrational or what? Is it possible? Rational minus rational will always give you a rational number, no? Still not clear. Okay, take a, take a deep breath and try to think what is a rational number. Rational number means it can be written in the form of fraction. The result of this calculation, is it a fraction or not, guys? Yes, sir. So, it, will it be rational or not? It will be rational number, of course, right? Yes, sir. That's what, it's very simple idea. Don't think too complicated about this. This is very simple. I'm telling you that A and B are integers. This is a fraction, so this is a rational number. So five minus some rational number will also be a rational number. That's what I'm telling. Nothing complicated. Is it clear to everyone? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Deep, you also had trouble with this? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So you don't need to write too many things. As you can see, you can just say that five minus a by b is rational. So if you are, if you have an equation like this, where your left hand side is a rational number, can your right hand side be irrational? Is it possible? And I'm saying that both of them are equal. Rational, can it be equal to irrational ever? Can't be. So again, that contradiction happens, right? We started with an assumption that something is rational and we did some calculation on it and we are seeing that a rational number has suddenly become equal to an irrational number root three. So this gives rise to a contradiction. It cannot happen. Something which cannot happen or shouldn't happen. That is what contradiction is. So how do you write it? You will just say that five minus a by three a by b is rational whereas root 3 is irrational. Here in this question, like I told you, whenever you have irrational part and a rational part, this kind of question, and if it carries two marks or something, you can simply assume that root, root 3 is irrational. You don't need to prove that root 3 is irrational. Okay. Don't need to prove that. Just say that root three is irrational. You know that that is irrational. Okay. So this is a contradiction. Rational number cannot be equal to irrational number.
again but i have doubts sir yes go ahead sir you told that rational number minus uh, a rational number is equal to a rational number only no sir mm -hmm. so here 5 is also a rational number and ab is also a rational number so root 3 would be a rational number only no, no this is our assumption no we have made an assumption that 5 minus root 3 is equal to a by b this is not a proof some this is not a given fact we have assumed that okay so according to our assumption this should happen that root 3 should be equal to this much but this cannot happen we know that root 3 is irrational so irrational number cannot be equal to rational are you able to understand the difference this is not a fact this is be what we have assumed it to be based on our assumption we are getting this result so we cannot conclude we cannot prove that okay root 3 is rational number no what is a and b root 3 is not rational okay this is irrational but why did this kind of result is coming because i am saying that this thing can be written in the form of a by b which is not true in reality you know this is an irrational number actually it can never be written in the form of a by b is it making sense what i'm saying yes okay so don't think too much about this topic i'm telling you again and again this is again like a theory okay this is not uh, like normal maths which you are used to of so i'm saying that this is rational and then i have written it as a by b you know but this is my assumption so based on that i cannot prove that root 3 based on my assumption i cannot prove that root 3 is a uh, rational in fact we are coming here to prove the opposite i am going to prove that this thing is irrational okay so yeah where were we so we had said that your left hand side is rational while your rhs is irrational which cannot be possible this is a contradiction and why did this contradiction arise because of our incorrect assumption incorrect assumption that 5 minus root 3 is rational so what we can conclude from this we can conclude that therefore 5 minus root 3 is actually irrational fine so what you will do uh, today also you will go through root 2 root 3 and this example 10 also all these proofs you will go through and uh, then you can practice it a few more times in home if you still have any doubts you can ask me tomorrow okay so that's it for the maths class uh, let's stop here